Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I think we should just do it. Yeah. Do you have theme music? I, I have I have the audio uh, subscription now, so I should be able to do whatever the fuck I want. Oh, okay. So there's going to be a little bit of theme music beforehand, and we're jamming, and then we just get right into it. Yeah, like what kind of music are we like? Some like synth pop or something? Or are we doing like something a, fitness or something or jazzy? Probably rock. You know? Yeah, like smart rock. Here come, no, 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 wearable tech and mm-hmm. fitbit watches and smart watches both of me and my guest scott have one on today scott yes uh, right you uh you got yourself a new little gift there for the new year's didn't you yeah i got myself a gift my girlfriend's very mad at me <laughs> <laughs> why because she, she she could you wanted her to give it to you well you know i probably could have he put it added, on your list put more on her list than on my list oh okay this is a part of a menagerie of gifts yes and but yeah i got a fitbit because i'm really interested in uh, the heart rate monitoring it's an inspire hr yes fitbit. they have so many different models now of those fitbits they have ones that have like all to compete with like the apple watch they mm-hmm. have like all these bells and whistles but really i think the main feature is the core features is the heart rate monitor and Telling time. That's about what you need. Yeah, that's what I care about. Over Christmas break, I was at my family's, and they have all the Apple Watches and stuff, and they were, you know, showing them off, being like, look, I get my notifications and all that. Yeah. And I didn't care about that. Well, I don't want that. You're not part of the Apple ecosystem. I'm not even in the ecosystem. So. I don't want to get text messages on the thing. It can do that, but it's yeah. not... Um, yeah, I think we'll talk about kind of the, some of the features and stuff. I, 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 I usually don't use a lot of the features for you know the extra bells and whistles and stuff like that but i do know that sometimes it's helpful to have some of those text messages come in and like my mom has a she has a apple watch now she used to have a fitbit now Mm. she has apple watch she's but she's in the apple ecosystem and losing our losing our notes there we can't go off a script on this episode (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but she uses it to find so she'll use it to locate like her phone when she can't find her phone she always has her watch on her so mm-hmm. but i i have just that little tile one of those little tile apps or one of those little tile keychain things on my uh my keys now and i use that to find my phone so i, don't, I just don't lose my phone i, I lose my phone all the time <laughs> believe it or not oh okay yeah so okay so we'll, we'll talk about that and the reason why we're we're talking about this is because it's a it's a, tr- it's a trendy topic and uh, originally, we were supposed to have th- this episode was supposed to be on arthritis with my friend Matt, but uh, you know he couldn't come in, so I had Scott come in to save the day. And uh, lately, One Life to Lift has been stuck kind of in like a production hell. We've been trying to launch our YouTube channel. Uh, we are recording this on video. For those who are subscribed to our Patreon, you can find this video on Patreon at patreon.com slash 1L2L. You've got some good benefits on that Patreon. Like some of those higher tiers, it's practically like hiring a personal trainer. It is basically. <laughs> our highest tier is basically I'm your personal trainer. Uh, you can make a you, you can make your own topics for the show. You can um, you know, you get you can be a guest on the show. I can literally, if you're within the area, I can train you in person. But if if most people aren't gonna be like that, so I can offer online digital training. You know, basically consulting and stuff like that but you know just the lower level stuff even if you just subscribe to the two dollar tier you get access to our discord server where you can chat with other people in the community and if i'm on there i can chat with you guys via text and stuff like that so there's a lot of perks on there yeah but why did we mention the patreon uh oh because this video is going to be on there so if you're listening to the audio version and you'd like to check out the video check out patreon but uh we're also going to be doing the YouTube channel. So the YouTube channel is going to be like more of our short form stuff. This is like just me going through a wide variety of topics, whereas the YouTube is going to be like very concise and heavily edited and entertaining. Whereas this is just raw, real and not esoteric. Not, cause, yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause that's the Scott case <laughs> thing. My lawyers were almost yeah. on the phone. <laughs> so Scott, Scott has his own podcast in case you missed episode one. We talked about it. It's the super colorful, original telecommunicated transmission, otherwise known as Scott cast. That's right. Yes. Can we get a round of applause for that? Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Wow. People are so much. 
Yeah, they're, 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 they're not. Well, so not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're just gonna like when you did that uh, the stand up comedy. I think you should have came out there and just like raised the audience, like ah, and then then brought it down, and then brought it ah, <laughs> and then cut. And it would have been so like you'll know when you made a stand up comedy, but you can command an audience like that. Okay. <laughs> but like when you're potting, we just have we do it all in post, so we have uh, you know our our studio audience is digital. You didn't have so. to give up the secret. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I did take a lot of real recordings from real people to make that uh, little compilation applause. You just comment, carry your so. recorder around with you into rooms and just mm. capture what happens when you enter a room. Yeah, it's like I could, uh, maybe if I had my smartwatch, I could record it everywhere I go. So mm. so anyways, um, so, we, so we covered, uh, you know, what, why we're talking about, uh, you know, the, the watch and everything. But the reason why because you just got one, but also I really wanted to do an episode on this because it is a very trendy topic. <clears throat> and ACSM, the American College of Sports Medicine, just released the top 10 fitness trends hmm. for 2019 because we just wrapped up 2019. Am I trendy? You're very trendy right now. Oh. People are searching for this stuff. Like, uh, you know, they're searching for, you know, group therapy stuff was one of them. And there's, you know, like personal training. Who cares about that, right? <laughs> Um, and then, of course, they had uh, the HIT training on there, too, which was uh, really big in the U.S. People were, I mean, we have an episode on high-intensity interval training, a.k.a. Yeah. HIT training, that you guys can check out. I think it was episode three. A comprehensive episode. It's very comprehensive. I'm probably going to do also companion videos on YouTube that summarize those pods, just get some down to the, the, the clickbait nitty-gritty, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a good idea. So, yeah, just make them very, you know, like... Should is hit effective for weight loss? And people are like, oh god. I, I, I mean, know. I listen to it, and it's all great info, and like yeah. you, you learn all sorts of stuff about it, and like, you know, how you should apply it, how right. you should apply it to your life, and so that's valuable. But yeah, the little short clips, that's what that's what the people yeah. want. You're not always yeah. You have to cater to the people <laughs> that's why we're using classic blue right now yeah which is it's the people's color in case you guys haven't noticed we got everything blue except we do have this little brain in the background here i'm gonna have to the audio is gonna cut out a little bit for me but we got the scott cast orange here for the mm -hmm. brain because uh, i bring the brawn and scott brings his brain i don't know yeah my brain his brain <laughs> not uh, the brain <laughs> this is not this is not the, yeah anyways so so we like blue here yeah yeah that's a, that's a that's a trend that's it's also trendy is blue is this year's color this pantone so, color of the pantone, year 2020 pantone color of the year so so people were that that's the other thing that people were searching for too they were searching for a hit and they were also with the i think it was like number three or something like that on the fitness searches and stuff like that was on wearable tech and you know smart devices and things like that so that's what we're going to talk about today so um and and for anybody who's just recently joining us like our, our viewership is growing by the way i got some people that were you know obviously we got your ham tramic listeners but we also have my indian listeners from hyderabad so everywhere from hyderabad to ham tramic <laughs> we've got people but also i just want to say shout out to our, our german listeners we got somebody listening from ghana and somebody from the uk i don't know who but thank you so if, I, don't, I don't know if they made it to episode six here but hopefully we'll see those numbers continue to grow and um yeah let me say we just jump into the the main topics here scott yeah all the, the world's listening let's get into it okay so what people really want to know is why does scott kraus the man the myth the legend need himself a fitbit band is it just because your your relatives are getting it you want to be like up to up to snuff with them i mean somewhat uh, what the story is they were showing it off and they brought off the heart rate thing and i was curious what it was and so I put it on and I'm looking at it and I was with my family and my heart rate was like, just sitting down having a beer, it was like 110. Oh, yeah. So the resting <laughs> heart rate should not be that high. No. I think we'll talk about, we'll talk about why it, the importance of a good resting heart rate a little bit later. So that was a little bit alarming to you? A little alarming because that's like the only snapshot I had about it. And then I started getting nervous about it. I started doing the counting the pulse for 15 seconds. Um, watch, your, watch your audio there. Oh. And Scott is he's palpating his mic right now. And it's like, <laughs> my heart rate is insane. <laughs> it's like, how many beep, beats per minute? Yeah. Um, yeah. So you, that's, that is, if you don't, if you guys don't have a, a watch, you can, you could just count, you know, you guys know how to feel for your pulse, right? You can, you can get your carotid pulse right here. Which right in the neck. Yeah. I usually go for the right common carotid right there. 
But uh, you can also use the your wrist arteries. You ever tried do, doing that? No. Yeah, let's just talk about that right now because I feel like you know we'll talk about the merits of using the tech. But I mean, you like when I'm when I was in the exercise physiology lab, we would actually you know we had to we had we had the heart rate monitors on, but then you also were supposed to palpate too to confirm and stuff like that to make sure that you know you weren't getting any wacky readings because you weren't. Uh, you, Depending on where you're at, like you, you don't always see the heart rate monitor as you're recording because usually somebody's doing a stress test and you're, you know, a graded exercise test. And anyways, the way that you find it is, um, I usually find the bone, like um, it's actually your your it would be your uh, radius. So your ulna is on this side, radius is on this side. So you're gonna get your radial pulse. So you find that bone that's pretty much if you follow your thumb down. Okay, there's like a little there's a bony prominence right there, and then if you go just uh, just medial to that. If you go just a little bit inside, you can find a pulse. So there's usually like some tendons right here, and it would be just lateral to that. So let me show you. Okay. So like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you'd find this bone. Oh, I'm going to the mic here. You find this bone right here, and you go just a little bit medial to that. Oh, okay. And so you should find a pulse right here. Okay. And um, yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to crush it. You don't want to push down too hard. You just want to keep a, but you do want to use your fingertips, so that's the most sensitive part. Uh, you know, you get a little more sensitive unless you maybe have calluses or something. Yeah, I yeah. got I got the guitar calluses. Them guitar calluses. So I use my other hand. Yeah, so you can use that, and you should be able to just feel your resting pulse. And usually, I'll try, I'll pick an easy number to multiply by. So it's like you don't want to do like 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 say that you want to multiply by ten to get to sixty seconds for the minute. You know, mm -hmm. it's like you you could do that. That's a pretty easy way of doing it, but um. I did 15 just seconds because it's four. 15, yeah, I was going to say, I usually use 15 because you can usually multiply stuff by four. But when you're going at a really high heart rate, it's like sometimes those numbers get up there. So just for the sake of math and stuff like that, it's easy to have in the, the monitor. But um, when you do start measuring your pulse, you start with zero. So you go zero, one, oh, two, okay. three, just so you know. Yeah. It, it's a little bit more reliable way of, of doing it because you get your pulse and you're like beat, beat beat and you go zero as soon as you find it you go zero one two three and you could look at a, a clock on the wall and it, or you could just use your 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 phone to time it out and then you just multiply it by so if you do a 15 second pulse you get multiply that by four it'll give you 60 seconds that's how many beats per minute so we'll talk about uh what's a good beat per minute but so you wanted to know i wanted to know if rate. i was going to die of a heart attack <laughs> yeah. i mean i guess if you were there is a there is a there is a thing called tachycardia where you have like elevated heart rate at rest, and that's not good. Um, there, if the opposite of that would be bradycardia where you have like a really low heart rate. Um, although there's different types of bradycardia. Normally, bradycardia is when you talk about somebody having a low heart rate in a bad sense, like because there's some kind of issue, uh, they're on like some kind of beta blocker or something like that that alters their heart rate. You know, alt, like or a pacemaker that's uh, you know that's altering or something like that. But normally, you want to have a really low resting heart rate. So, what was your yours was at 110? If you noticed it, it what, you were in like a social setting though. You were it was probably a, yeah, it yeah. was a social setting. I was with my family. I was you know, and I so it was I think a little higher. I've what, since, are, you, what are you at right now? I'm at 80 now. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's because not so bad. We're we're actually fairly pumped up for this episode and stuff, so that's that's pretty good. It's probably low. Have you noticed it lower? Is it like closer to seventy at rest? Like when I'm waking up, sitting on the couch, real chill. Yeah, it's between sixty and seventy. Okay. Yeah, I think the average is between sixty and eighty. So like seventy would be the average of that that range there. But um, the the more fit, cardiovascularly fit that you are, um, and just fit in general, but cardiovascularly fit you know the, the better you are with cardio it's usually lower so like you look at somebody like a lance armstrong type of guy he's more like you know lower 30s or something like that oh yeah really yeah. that low yeah pretty low oh okay. and that's rest that's true true resting okay if you're walking around or you're standing and stuff it's going to be higher also if you're in like water too you'll have a higher resting heart rate because you'll get more that pressure from the water kind of squeezes you a little bit and uh. kind of changes your heart rate. So there's a number of things that can change your heart rate, but if you're just chilling at rest and you've been resting for a while, that's usually the rest, the true resting. Okay. You're like your baseline. And then if you just finished exercise, like if you're, you know, you did like a little warm up on the treadmill or whatever, and then you kind of get off and you, you wait a few minutes, it, it's going to be a little bit elevated. 
But so you you want to get that true resting when you're just on the couch. What's your resting heart rate? And yeah, mine's like low fifties. This yeah. is the kind of fitness advice I can take: sit on the couch, do nothing. Yeah, <laughs> measure your measure yourself, add nauseum, yeah. and then profit. That's, yeah, that's the last step. So yeah, if you look at that, that's a very good. And I think that a lot of people they miss out on the importance of the resting heart rate too. So they they think like what what. What, we're going to talk about that. What intensity should I be at when you're exercising and stuff like that? I'm sure you probably want to know, right? Mm -hmm. But I think it's really important to know resting because um, there's a little more advanced way that you can try. It's not super advanced, but it's a little trickier. It's called the Carvonin method or the heart rate reserve method. Um, you basically look at, you You figure out what your max heart rate is. You know how to do that? Uh, your age... Oh, 220 minus 220 your age. minus your age. So that's the that's the standard formula that everybody uses. They use it in research all the time. It was this guy came up with it a long time ago. It's fairly accurate, so they just rocked with it. You know, now everything's kind of based off of that standard. So you find your 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 max heart rate, and then you find your resting heart rate, and then you kind of look at the difference between the two. So like, say you got somebody who's really young and fit. Okay, let's let's say you got a 20 year old to make the math easier. You got a 20 year old guy. He's fairly fit. He's in college or whatever. He he works out a lot. Does the and keg stands? He does the keg stands. He's he's doing those. He's 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 doing the press. You know, he's doing a. Yeah. He's got beefy shoulders. You know. And he's got good cardio because he runs too. He does the he does beer runs. He <laughs> runs to go get the beer, and then he does the keg stand. Yeah. He's in great shape. Right. Okay. So he's he would have a max heart rate of like two hundred. You know, two twenty minus your age is two hundred for that one. And then it's like say he's got he's in really good. You know, he has like a resting heart rate of like fifty. Like you know, because he's in really good shape. You know? Really plays a lot of beer pong. You know. Yeah. Great shape. Like elite athlete. He mostly just carries beer around. He doesn't drink it apparently. <laughs> he's, he's an elite athlete. He's like the guy from Beer Fest. They go to Beer Fest and they're just like they're they're elite athlete drinkers, okay? Oh. He's at the top 1%. It actually has a heart rate that's low enough to be healthy. So, let's say his heart rate's at 50% or at, at 50 beats per minute. So, uh, 200 beats per minute is his max heart rate. 50 beats per minute is is resting. So that's a big heart rate reserve he has because he has 150. Oh, okay. He has 150 beats of wiggle room there. Oop, just about the mic. Yeah, mm, yeah. So that's pretty good. Having a, you want to have a big heart rate reserve. So if you had, uh, you know, if you're two, so if he had like a resting heart rate of 110, he'd only be able to elevate it by like 90 beats from resting. So it's not a whole lot of buffer between when you're resting and when you need to ramp things up. So if you need more blood supply, to deliver oxygen to your muscles, and you can't really ramp things up because you're already ramped up, that's a bad thing. And actually, like, say you had, um, and I'll show you how you calculate using the heart rate reserve line. We're going to do math here, folks. Just, just a little tiny math. I don't like math, but I have to use it sometimes for my job. And for well, it's research. all adding and subtracting. It's all just a bunch of made up mumbo jumbo. <laughs> So, <laughs> just whipping numbers out of your numbers aren't real head. yeah numbers are an illusion so an illusion that works very well so so we were talking about heart rate reserve yeah yeah oh well, so my oh, heart rate oh, oh. reserve like uh, my fitbit calls my resting heart rate 69 Mm, right no right? you're gonna have to censor that out oh okay, okay. sorry it's a family program okay let's okay. call it 70 <laughs> yeah, there you go <laughs> so 70 i'm 30 so 190 minus 70 mm -hmm. is 120 120 heart rate reserve right okay well, let's let's i'll write that down for later okay so what so what was it 190 minus uh 70 yeah equals uh 120 yes as your heart rate reserve okay so yeah so i think i was gonna talk oh why let's talk about for a second why 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 having a lower heart rate would still work because i just talked about i mentioned like you want to be able to deliver a lot of blood to your to your muscles and you know and so you, if you ramp things up with the accelerated heart rate you get more blood because you have a bigger cardiac output you could you, you you know but cardiac output is based off your heart rate and your stroke volume so it's like it's not just how fast your heart beats but how much it beats so how much blood it, it expels okay so you can ramp it up by increasing, and, and this will be on the blog, that equation that for cardiac output we'll calculate <laughs> for you nerds out there. Okay, so if I ramp up my heart rate, then yeah, I can get more blood delivered, but also the amount per beat can also increase too. That's your stroke volume. So Lance Armstrong, when he's on his bike, he's only beating, or he's not on his bike, he's just resting, right? Okay, now he's really resting because, you know. Well, he is beating, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so basically he's at like, say he's at like 30 beats per minute, right? 
so God, you might have to make it so dirty. I didn't have to say. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, so so he's so he's um he's at like thirty beats per minute, which is pretty low. But his stroke volume is insane because his his don't do that. His heart rate, his heart is able to get bigger with each beat and fill up with more blood and more powerfully contract. So it can get bigger, it can expand its volume more and get a larger stroke volume. So each beat carries more blood. So if you have more blood per beat, you don't need to beat as much, right? So. Yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. So that explains why having a low heart, resting heart rate is, is a sign that that is good because when you're at rest, you only need you know, a decent amount, like a serviceable amount of oxygen. And so you need a serviceable amount of blood being carried around there. And uh, so, you, you know, having a lower heart rate, yeah, takes care of it, right? Makes yeah. sense? It's strong, so it doesn't need to work as much. All right. So let's talk about, so you got your, your heart rate reserve here. We got for you. So a lot of times people won't use heart rate reserve. They'll just use a percentage of your, of your heart rate. But that doesn't factor in that buffer I'm talking about. You know, mm-hmm. it, which is a bet, it's, it's just more accurate because it's more... It, it factors in when you're resting and when you're working. So that way it's a better able to predict like what work, you know, how much, you know, what, what intensity you should be at. So let's say that you wanted to work at like, um, you know, vigorous exercise. And let's say you want to work at like 70%, um, you know, vigorous activity. So you, what you could do is you could take your heart rate reserve and you can multiply that by the intensity that you desire. Okay. So let's say it's a hundred percent intensity. Let's say that instead, because that's going to make the math really easy. Okay. 100% intensity would be 120, right? Because your heart rate reserve is 120. So mm-hmm. times that by 100%, that's 120. And then you'd add in your resting heart rate to that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that brings you back up to your 190. So mm-hmm. at 100%, at 100% intensity, it makes sense, right? Yeah. You, you know, 120 plus 70 brings you back up to 190. That's your 220 minus your age, right? That's, that's your max heart rate. So... And we're recording, right? Oh, it must have turned off. Did it? I think so. Okay. Hold on. Let's let's put a pause on this, folks. Okay. We might have just lost a little bit of audio. That's why we were testing this out. One sec. Well, so we just had a little scare there. We thought that we might have lost maybe our, our video, but I actually I caught it just before it stopped. So we were in the middle of doing math. I think that was the reason why it... it just That's started. Yeah, we, we started doing math and it went a haywire in our brains. The orange thing turned off. It was, <laughs> it was like, too much math, David. <laughs> yeah. Cut, cut it. <laughs> you don't want so, this out in public, David. I, I promise it's almost done. So the math is really easy. We, we basically are talking about how like if you're working at 100% intensity, it's basically you just do you know heart rate reserve times 100% gives you your exact number and then it's like it makes sense like so you'd be working at like 190 beats per minute because that's your heart rate max and that's 100 percent intensity that's what you selected so let's say that you're trying to just not kill yourself because doing going all out for every workout is a bad idea unless you're like an elite athlete okay mm-hmm. let's just say that you want to go in the vigorous intensity range okay so you got like light light moderate and vigorous intensity okay. vigorous stuff is where you get really good gains like really good yeah. So you want to incorporate, you want to hit that vigorous intensity as much as you can. And that's okay. why the hit training is great because you do vigorous and then you rest and vigorous. And so you spend a lot of time in that vigorous uh, zone there, which causes some extra adaptations to start, which are nice. It's not going to make you burn any more fat, spoiler alert. But, you know, anyways, I'm, I'm getting tangential here. So let's try to figure out 60 to 70, or no, 60 to 80% of your, uh, for that, like what heart rate range you should be in. That's probably a good goal for you, right? For you, yeah. especially Scott, like I wouldn't give you like a 90% vigorous intensity one to do or a hundred percent. Let's, let's figure out the low end of the range for you. And then the upper end of the range. And the goal is just when you're exercising for however long you decide to stay in that range. Yeah. And I think a range is good too, because number one, you're not a robot, but number two, there's only a certain amount of accuracy to these watches and stuff like that. And we'll talk about how accurate they are in a minute they're they're fairly accurate they're they're good for this range that i'm giving you if you want to use them for research i'd be a little hesitant just because it's going to be a little bit more variability but um, i guess i'll just address that right now it's it's they're they're reliable enough okay it's like it used to be there it could be off by as much as 15 and 20 beats um which was bad Mm -hmm. um but you know now they're they're like within like 10 beats per minute so it's, it's fairly fairly close to being valid so um yeah, and like, because like, what you need with the, any device that you're using is you want it to be precise, right? You don't. It doesn't necessarily even need to be accurate. So, like, let's say you're measuring percent body fat. It's like 
whether whatever method you use, it's like as long as it gives you the same number each time, that's okay because you can see your percent body fat go down. But you know, it's like you're going to see different things from different tests, and so it's like it's it's, it's like the, the analogy of uh, you're shooting an arrow, okay, and like you keep on hitting the exact same spot, or like you're playing darts and you keep on hitting the exact same spot over and over again. You're very precise, you're just not accurate. So as long as you have that precision, it's okay. Mm-hmm. So anyways, so these as long as these these are fairly reliable devices, they're fairly precise. Who cares about accuracy, right? So let's do the math. So if you want to do 60% of your heart rate reserve, we figured out before your heart rate reserve, you had an you had that buffer of 120, right? Mm-hmm. So if you take 120, multiply that by 0. 0.6. Okay. 120 times 0. 0.6 is 72. 72 beats per minute. Okay. So that's if you wanted to, that's the low end of the range, let's do 80%. So 0. 0.8 times 120. 96. 96. Okay. What was your first number? The resting heart rate? Yeah. No, the the 70 something? 72. Okay, 72 to 96. And now we're going to add back in your resting heart rate. So okay. that's the, those percentages, that's like how much extra effort you're giving. And then you add that on to your resting. So your resting was what, 70? 70. So do 72 plus 70? 142. That's okay. So that's the final number you're going to look at for the low end of the range. Okay. So I'm not even, don't even call it exercise unless I'm at 142. No, you can still call it exercise. (laughs) That's terrible. (laughs) People will be like, shit, I'm not doing vigorous all out exercise. I'm screwed. But that should be a good, that's a goal. It's a goal to have. Okay. You might not start with that. And then the 96 plus 70, this could be upper range for 80% of your heart rate. Plus 70. 166. If I'm at 167, call an ambulance. No, don't. Just keep going. You're doing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no, no. It's good. That's that's you got to do. That's what's good enough. Okay. If you can go further without like, you know, feeling like you're gonna actually gonna go to the hospital or whatever. I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't say that like going to pass these ranges is like really dangerous. Okay. Unless you have like a heart condition or whatever, then you know talk to your doctor and see if it's he'd probably recommend more stuff like this. Okay, if they know what they're talking about, like a cardiac person, but not just your general physician, they probably would be like, yeah, just listen to your body or whatever. But we're not trying to just listen to your body. You should listen to your body, but this is a this is nice because like even if I have one of my clients, I can tell them, you know, to use these exact uh it depends on the person too. Like some people they want to use these metrics. Other people, it's like they want to just use listen to their body kind of thing. Well, for me, it's I I got I I just don't like the counting like we said and stuff like that. So yeah. I was looking for. That's the second reason I got this thing is I want a different way to gauge how I'm working, and this is perfect. It's like okay, if you're it's just in like that double range. checking, and like that way too, you can validate too. You can see what your RPE is, so like that's your rating of perceived exertion. So like a ten out of ten effort for you would be like a ten on the RPE scale. Mm-hmm. So like you you want to be like at a seven or an eight. So when you're feeling like you're at a seven or an eight, and then you check your heart rate and you see it, is it actually in that seventy to eighty percent? range Mm -hmm. so let's say let's say let's keep it the exact same as what we did here we um you want to be a a six out of ten or an eight out of ten in terms of effort yeah 142 through 166 it should correspond to that roughly but you can use that as a way of like eventually even if you don't have the band now you know what it feels like you're you're, you have a way of validating yourself like okay really and actually the research shows that um RPE corresponds very well with heart rate. It's very linearly related. And heart rate is very linearly related to your exercise intensity. So they're all just linked in this linear fashion, and they're all very highly correlated. So once you get good at it, it's like you don't need the band as much, but it's nice having the band. Mm -hmm. Plus, it it, it tracks everything. You can look at the end of the day. It can be good to see your validation of, you know, displayed out in front of you. It's motivating. So for you, I think we determined 142 to 166 beats per minute. Yeah. If you guys... uh, you know, want to write in with your experience. If you get confused and need help, um, you, you can check the blog for the math. But uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions about um, exercise intensity or how to, uh, you, know, you know, any of these variables that we're talking about, like you want to know about VO2 max, maybe, you know, you're, it's like a measure. You know what VO2 max is? We talked about it before, I think, is, one time. Is that um, like you, how much you're breathing? Yeah, it's, well, it's, it's, it's not necessarily how much you're breathing. It's how much of that oxygen in the air that you're using. So like you might breathe in a ton of air, but if you can't actually take the oxygen out of that air and put it into the actual working tissue, like, cause you don't have enough mitochondria and you don't, you're not, you don't have a developed cardiovascular system and 
you're not efficient at using the oxygen, then you're not going to have a high VO2. Like, I could give you an oxygen mask with 100% oxygen. It wouldn't make a difference anymore. Oh, okay. Like, you know, when you watch those uh, football games and you got the guy, the, the out-of-shape guys that are, you know, the the linemen or whatever, the, the big guys, you know. Not it. Anyways, not huge football aficionado. The big guys, okay? They pick up they pick up the ball and they run down the field, right? And it's like they never do any cardio or sprinting because they're huge dudes. And then they go to the sideline and they're all gassed, you know, because they had to run like 20 yards to get that touchdown after the fumble. And they're out of the O2 mask. It's like that's mostly placebo. It's it's not really doing anything for them. I mean, maybe like negligible amounts of extra oxygen they're getting, but it's like they literally don't have the capacity to pull that oxygen out of the air. So, you know, like they're – you could try to measure so that's vo2 is your volume of oxygen o2 is oxygen volume of oxygen so that's a really good indicator of your cardiorespiratory fitness but um i i think one of my clients was telling me that on his fitbit he has he has one of the newer ones i have a blaze he has probably has a versa or something like that i don't think he has the ionic which has the gps but he uh he was saying it says something about it approximate vo2 i have to check into that because um your heart rate doesn't necessarily like it is correlated with the vo2 but i I wouldn't use that as a surrogate for vo2 if you really want to know your vo2 max you need to have the mask on and that's what he did on that one episode of scott cast i said what's your cast yeah check out the feud cast episode i think it's part is that part one or part 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 one part one where we do the little game that Mm -hmm. we play and i say what's wrong with this picture and the guy is not wearing the mask because you need to measure the actual gases in the air for a, a true VO2 max test. So your 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 wearable device will never tell you that, um, unless wearable technology advances. That'd be cool, but you know, <laughs> like nanobots will tell you your VO2. But even if you know your VO2 max, and like you know, the higher the VO2 max, the bet like the better the athlete you have, the better their VO2 max is. But it's not like just doing VO2 max is going to tell you everything you need to know because. Um, if, if, if you could literally just say like, who's the best athlete by their VO2 max, there'd be no need to run the race. You just have them do it going in a lab and say, okay, well, you, I don't you think you're going to sell tickets and popcorn to a bunch yeah. of people breathing in a mask. <laughs> yeah. But it'd be interesting because if you did, you know, but there's so many other factors that go into your performance and we'll talk about in future episodes, how to increase your performance. If you guys are interested in that, write in, or if you want to know more about VO2 max, write in, I'm, I'm getting into a tangent here. Just so. write in for God's just sake. For the love of God, <laughs> got one life to lift at gmail.com. That's got one life to lift at gmail.com. Those are numbers. There'll be a thing in the video that'll show right here, right? But if you're uh, on Patreon, uh, wait, then I, I got you know. Right. Or you can just comment. It should be patreon.com slash 1L2L or got one life to lift. And I will lift that up here and pass it to Scott. <laughs> There's not going to be any text on here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Okay. So, um, so, okay, does that, that make you feel a little more confident about how to... Yeah, that's exactly know? what I wanted to know about it, really. And you can use that again and check, check, check the blog or ask me or text me or whatever if you need the... The details but um y- your heart resting heart rate will change as you get in better shape so that that will change but for right now you got a ballpark about one 142 to 166 to work with but you can go above that you can go all the way up to 190 right yeah i think my max so far was 169 yeah you're probably not going to get to 190 i don't want to get to 190 so. actually 160 you, you, well, that high was pretty yeah not in, not comfortable you, you might actually get past 192 is possible. Like when we used to do the VO2, the, or sorry, when we were testing our VO2 max in the, the, the labs, we did a maximal ex- exercise protocol. I think I was 20 at the time. Remember I said 220 minus your age would give you 200 as your max. My, my heart rate max was 203. Ooh. It was not 200. So it's an estimation. Mm-hmm. So That's all estimating. So, okay. So let's let's see if we're, if we're sticking to the script here, okay? We talked about why Scott got his, his, uh, his watch. Does he like it? Do you like it, Scott? I love it. Oh, I've I've I've, I've taken it off for showers. Ah, uh-huh. so we're gonna we're gonna be sponsored by Fitbit now. Yeah, yeah. We'll have a link in the description, affiliate link. <laughs> we probably should do that. I probably should yeah, do you, that. Yeah, hundred percent. Should do that. Uh, for the YouTube video, I will. This is Patreon only. So, all right. So yeah, I'll have an affiliate link. Maybe I'll put it in there. We'll see what happens. If you guys want, I'll, I'll give you my recommended one. I think I I like Scott's Inspire HR. And I'll give you another one to another model. With other it's features. a good. It's it's not very expensive. It was like seventy bucks. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's great price. Yeah, very affordable. It used to be they're using these for research now too, like the um, because they have the accelerometers built into them too, three uh, D accelerometers, and they're using those in research studies now because they're they're it's more affordable. 
it used to be very expensive for a study if you had like all these participants you had uh, 50 participants in a study and each one needs a hundred dollar accelerometer you know that would be expensive but if you can even get that down to seventy dollars that'd be yeah much more affordable when you're trying to i don't know if you've ever tried to request funds for research it's not very much fun you know, <laughs> they usually say do you really need to do all this stuff and you'd be like or could you use this on and that's why it's so important to have these alternative methods like for example i want to talk about the talk test for measuring intensity because it's like that's the one that i was familiar with like if okay. you can talk you're at a certain level if you can sing you're practically sitting down yeah so it's like, and they've, they've tried to validate those things because it's like, what do you do if you can't afford these watches? Like what other ways could you measure your intensity? Well, obviously you could, we taught you how to palpate your, your pulse. Okay. You put two fingers right there and you, you just count it out the way that we had said, but, um, you can also like, it, it's hard to do that when you're running and yeah. you're moving around. I've tried to get somebody's pulse while they're literally running like this as I have the blood pressure cuff on them trying to listen in. And it's like, it's because of those cheap research funders. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, they want you to, they want you to learn how to do it that way because yeah, it's, it's like a rite of passage kind of thing. And then they're like, let's give you the easier automatic blood pressure cuff or the, the what we use is the heart rate monitors. We use the polar heart rate monitors, which go right over your chest. That's the one that people use in research. I said, they don't use these. Um, and that one's not, that uses telemetry. It's not using the optics like it does on these ones. These ones just measure your blood flow optically with a little sensor. Uh, telemetry actually looks at, it's like right over your heart and it gives you the, the beats. So, and it's wireless and it's like a little strap you have to put on. If, if you had a woman, you'd have to put it, like usually you put it right under the bra strap and it stays on there real good and it doesn't move around. Um, and that's what we use in research. But it's like, you're not always gonna have those uh, pieces of equipment available. So. Um, you can use the talk test as a measure of intensity. So like you said, it's like, you don't want to be able to sing, right? Usually it's like, I use the pledge of allegiance is a good one. Cause everybody knows it. I don't know if you're American, sorry. If you're, listeners. if you're American and over the age of 27, sure. I don't think they do it anymore. <laughs> I don't know. In the schools? No, I don't know. We're not, we're not going to get political on the podcast. <laughs> Cut <here>. it out. <laughs> I swear to God. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, so the, the talk test. So it's basically like if you can say the Pledge of Allegiance, like I'm, I'm, I'm talking to somebody, I have them on the treadmill, and it's like you can usually just tell like just kind of how they're talking or whatever, but when you, if you haven't do the Pledge of Allegiance and you ask them, was that comfortable for you to talk while you're doing that? And if the answer is yes, then they pass the talk, the talk test. If they say no, it was uncomfortable, they don't pass the talk test. It was probably too intense. They probably crossed over their ventilatory threshold. Mm. That's what the, the VT, it's... Um, it's pretty closely approximated with your lactate threshold too, which is like the amount of lactate that's building up, you know, lactic acid in your blood as you increase in, increase the intensity. But um, yeah, we'll probably talk about those measures too. If you guys want to know about ventilatory threshold, let me know. But I'm not going to go into that rabbit hole because, you know. But yeah, that's how you pass the talk test. Is somebody you should be able to if if I'm talking to one of my clients and they're on the they're doing this intense exercise or whatever, it's like and we're not doing hit stuff, we're doing like just steady state cardio. It's like I should be able to have they should be able to have a conversation with me, but they shouldn't be able to tell me a story. Like if they're telling me I was like, you know, how was your day or whatever and they tell me this long winded, like three minute story, I'm like, Okay, you're not but if they're like huffing and puffing between breaths, that's okay. But if they can't get a full sentence out, that's that's an issue. So you can use that as a way to approximate. And then also like what I like to do too is like people are always asking me about like rest, rest periods, like how long they should rest between exercises. And it's like, again, you have the two types of people. You have the OCD person who's like, I need the exact, you know, 30 to 90 seconds. Okay, I got that. And then you got the other person and I'm like, so, so who just doesn't care. So like for the first person, I would tell them, yeah, like between 30 and 90 seconds is a decent rest interval. And that's what they recommend for most people. Now, if you're older and you, you, you need longer rest periods. So like if I train when I'm training my 90 year old clients, you know, I give them over 90 seconds. I usually give them, you know, like I give them like two minutes or, you know, like, so it's 120 seconds, something like that, or just as long as they need really. But like, that's the, that's the takeaway there too, is like, you just go based off of like your, your breathing. It's like, if you're, if your breath is all caught up, you're ready to go for the next exercise. Um, but you know, a lot of these circuit training, uh, cor you know, like courses and, uh, group classes and stuff like that, they keep you cycling through and they give you like a 30 second rest. And you're usually not caught. Your breath is not caught up at that point. So do you have any questions about rest intervals? 
Yeah, how long like should the exercise be between rest intervals? Okay, so are we talking about cardio or are we talking about... I suppose, I guess. Well, well, most of the time that I'm doing stuff is like a strength training thing. So it's like how long of a rest period you need in between sets. So that's what I was talking about. Oh, sets, like, okay. Yeah, so like sets of exercise. So you do like a certain number of reps. It forms a little cluster, which we call a set. And it's like you do a certain number of sets, and then you're done with the workout for for weights, for lifting weights and stuff like that. So even if you're doing like your little group classes, they'll have you do an exercise, and I, I think we're coming up to, to we're, we're almost at 20. almost at twenty minutes. Okay, good. So they'll have like you'll, you'll be in a group exercise setting, and they'll have you do a cycle around, and they'll say you do push ups, then you do squats, then you do you know burpees, then you do whatever you do squats or what. I think I said squats, right? Yeah. Lunges or something like that, right? And each one, it's like you get like a 30-second rest in between. So that's that's the kind of rest periods I'm talking about. Okay. Now, in terms of uh, cardio, it's it's totally up to you. You, you go as long as, as long as you want. Um, the rest periods only become important if you're doing interval training. So like when we're doing the high-intensity interval training, you do like a, a interval of very intense exercise, and then you would either completely rest or do like an active rest where you're just like slowly walking or just – you know, pacing around very slowly and very low intensity stuff. But I usually just go based off of uh, the, the talk, almost kind of like the talk test. It's like if somebody's breath is caught up, they probably rephosphorylated all of their phosphocreatine, right, in their mm. system. You know, if they're using the creatine shuttle, right? What? <laughs> I was trying to trip you up with the first one, Scott, and you didn't, you didn't, you didn't budge. So, so, um, no, it's like, uh, so like when, when you're lifting weights, right? Mm -hmm. And it's an anaerobic exercise without oxygen, they call it, right? So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, it's like your quick explosive stuff, you know, it's like, well, how come you're all out of breath after you're done with that, right? If it doesn't use that oxygen, why are you breathing so hard, right? You ever think about that? No. Yeah. It doesn't make sense, right? Like what I thought, I thought this was used, not using oxygen. I thought it was the fast, my, either my fast glycolytic system or my phosphocreatine system. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. So those are the, so you have your, you have your three energy systems. You have your, your phosphocreatine system, which is your very explosive sprinting kind of interval level. And then you have your fast glycolytic pathways, which are also without oxygen, but they don't use that readily available creatine to do explosive work. And then you have your longer base, you know, your, your uh, stuff that uses the Krebs cycle. Remember that from school? Krebs no. cycle? No. It's, it's basically your, how you generate a ton of, it's how you use oxygen to make a ton of energy. It's slower, but it makes a crap ton of energy using oxygen, but it takes time. So those three systems feed together and it's not like you use one and then the other one shuts off or something like that. That's a big misconception. But they, they have little shuttles that go between the two different systems. Mm. So what you do is like you use your phosphocreatine system, which is like your explosive stuff. And then you, it takes one or two minutes for that little shuttle to take oxygen from the big, slow, but energy producing oxidative pathways. It takes energy from there. Like little boats carry over um, a whole bunch of high energy and it gives it, it rephosphorylates. It gives the energy back to your creatine system, which is your explosive system. So it takes one or two minutes for that to happen. Ooh. So you're still using your oxidative pathways, but you're using it after you rest. So it's like you're kind of replenishing your supplies. So that's why you breathe hard after you're done. Oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I'm glad it did because I just, I, I wrote a paper on that one time. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> on the the actually you no, know, that was my um, that was my question for getting into grad school was explain the three energy pathways, and I did not do it that succinctly. So nice. Did it so like, you could get into grad school even better now. Now you guys can get into grad school. Yeah. That's so I think that's a good that's a good point for us to try to do our little wrap up here. I know we're probably going to run out of room here soon, so let's uh yeah. let's let's pause here for a second and then we'll go right into the uh, conclusions, the takeaway messages and looking towards the future. I like to look to the future. Yes. We got this, we got like wires and shit running out of us we're at the bar. We're like, yeah, what? We're just you don't mind us recording you, do you? No. Bartender. No. I'm kind of like a bartender. Tending the bars of fitness. That's right. The barbell tender. I kind of want to have a t-shirt that's like just shows me and it's like a little cartoon version of me and I'm like just cleaning, you know, like the guy who's cleaning the glasses or whatever, the bartender, but it's like me just like cleaning some dumbbells or a barbell. Yeah, that's going to look uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> why not? I mean, we're we talking about... Uh, Beats per minute here. And I didn't stroke, say that. Stroke volume. You're, you're the one who was saying all the things. I just, I was keeping it together. Jesus Christ, Scott. <laughs> all right. Okay. So, 
So let's uh, let's let's bring it into the home stretch here, okay? So the, the final topic before we wrap things up is going to be on because while we took our little break there, you you were checking your uh, watch and it has a fat burning zone on. Yeah, there. So, so, so well, I was, I was in the fat burning that. zone for a little bit during this pod. You burned a little fat. I burned a little fat during the pod. Okay, is that true? I mean, you're burning fat all the time, so yeah. Oh. But I mean, is it, are you burning extra? Are you, when you're in the zone, what does that mean? Yeah, because they really push it on you. It's like it's like I'm on the, I'm in the fat what, burning what, zone all the time. What? Yeah. So the problem is that I have the fat burning zone, and the and the whole terminology behind it is when you're when you're at low intensity exercise, you're burning more fat because you're, you're, you're you have a larger percentage of. I don't want to go too much in the details, but basically without going into the biochemistry of it all, you, you are burning a lot of fat when you're, you know, a large percentage of fat when you're at rest, but you're also just burning less calories total. So it, is it really going to help you? Like, doesn't, who cares where the calories are coming from? If it's from fat or if it's from carbs or whatever, it's like you're a calorie is still going to be a calorie that you're going to be burning. Okay. So it's going to draw from wherever it's going to draw from. But overall, you want your total daily calories balance to be, you know, where, where it's going to be. And, um, like, that's the problem is I'll see, like, somebody who's like, I want to be in the fat burning zone. So, like, um, I, it's on the treadmills, too. So you'll see it on the, uh, you know, on the watches. And what does it what does it say the zone is? Does it actually give you a, a range? Cause that I think mine over. starts around 90 it, like like the little heart fills in and that's yeah. the that's when the, does it end like 140 or 150 or something like that probably it goes into yeah calls it cardio yeah right around yeah. 140 where we kind of right so that's right below so if you look at that and you go i want to burn some fat oh here's the zone i should be in for burning fat i want to lose weight i want to burn fat and the problem is that's right below the vigorous intensity part that i was talking about <laughs> yeah where you where it's most efficient yeah. and where are you gonna burn the most calories in the vigorous intensity zone right but it's harder so it's like kind of like a cop-out that people think oh well i'll just do the really easy exercise but then they would have to do it for so long that way like you'd have to go say you, you, would you rather walk slowly for an hour or would you rather just do like 15 minutes of vigorous exercise i mean know? i don't mind a leisurely stroll but yeah. i'm trying to get fit here well it's like you know people always say they don't have enough time too and it's like you know are you really is that sustainable for you to always like do an hour of this super long, it's like super long, boring, low intensity, steady state cardio. It's L I S S low intensity, steady state versus H I I T high intensity interval training. Mm -hmm. I think you get a lot more bang for your buck that way. And you know, like all the research has shown like, in, like the hit stuff, it's like you can get the same kind of, uh, calorie burn, for example, uh, but 40% of the time. It's like, why don't you just do that? It's like, oh, it's hard. Well, it's it's it, you don't have to have that concentration for as long. It's not you, you're not enduring the the burn and all that stuff for that long compared to like you just dra dragging out your your routine. So I think the fat burning zone is a big kind of almost misnomer. I don't think they should they should call it that. They should just call it like the lower in, intense. I mean, it's 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 that like corporate greed. They just want people to they just want people to feel like they're doing something real easy, so that they're like, oh, exercising is easy for me. Well, I mean, like, so you're still in the fat burning zone even when you're like at rest, technically. Yeah, I got in the fat burning zone you're watching burning. TV. The other yeah. day. <laughs> so it's like if that's if that's the scale that you're going to use, it's like you're really fat burning when you're just watching TV. But it's like, yeah, you're not going to burn much fat that way because you're you really want to focus on like the amount of calories you're burning. Burning. That's going to be the most important thing for for weight loss because you're looking at your energy balance, mm -hmm. energy in versus energy out, calories calories in versus calories out. So you eat a certain amount of calories, you got to burn that amount of calories. If you're not burning as much calorie, that's the most thing is like tracking your calories is that, and that's something that um, it it, it uh, well it approximates it the, the amount of calories you burn. Although I I don't know some of these do you have like uh, your the, here's the problem I have okay. I don't, I wouldn't have a problem with these having calories on them if I knew what the equation was, but they're all proprietary information. So I can't, unless, unless somebody from Fitbit wants to get in touch with me, I would, I would actually love to talk. If anybody from Fitbit is watching anybody this. Anybody from Fitbit is on Patreon. Or, or yeah, <laughs> or listening to the podcast. But if anybody knows anybody from Fitbit or a representative or something like that, or somebody from the Apple Watch series or something like that, because I would like to know 
uh, where they're getting their equation from. Maybe I wouldn't have to disclose that how information. Would, how would like a scientist do the calorie burning? Like they, they have, can't they strap a Fitbit on someone with the other method? See? Yeah, you can you can do that, but then the, the research would all be very based off of this brand, and you'd probably be sponsored by that Fitbit. So then people would say, oh, well, here's a sponsored thing. You you know, they provided all the the tech used, and they they, they have most of the study has been on validation for. Uh, reliable heart rates. A lot of it has not been based off of validation for uh, c- calories. And I'd have to look, I'd, I'd have to see, um, I'll probably check into that to see what, uh, what if there's any new research that's been done on calories. But since it's always changing and it, it's all proprietary information, it's very hard for them to do that because it's like, like, so when they when they do it for research, they have all these estimated equations, and it's it's using your VO2 to figure out how many calories you're burning. Because in order to burn calories, you need to use oxygen that you're breathing in the air. So you know in your VO2 how much oxygen you're burning. You know that every oxygen mole- molecule is part of either coming from a carb or a fat, or you know, you can track where that oxygen gets burned up. You know, you can use that the amount of oxygen that you're burning figures to figure out how much calories you're burning. I mean, when you burn something, you need oxygen, right? It makes sense. Yeah. So anyways, not going too much into the biochemistry, but that's, what were, what were we talking about? The calories? Yeah, like the vanity metrics on this thing. You yeah. Know, it's got the fat burn zone. It's talking, it's like like this thing right now, it'll tell. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Yeah. Like I've burned 1,621 calories today. That's so total, specific. T- total. But then you also sure. have it per the workout, right? So yeah. we'll do a video in the future probably about calories and how to track them because this is a whole can of worms that you can get into. But basically it's like nowadays you can enter in your all your metrics and stuff, but it's like, uh, you know, 300 pound, uh, you know, 60 year old man is going to burn different amount of calories than, uh, you know, a little Asian woman that's, you know, uh, you know, young, 20 years old or whatever. You know, it's like they're going to have completely different so it's like when you get on a treadmill too, it doesn't ask you, it always bugs me. It doesn't ask you what you, you know, it, it, it does, you can put it in, but a lot of people just hit go and it's like, they say, oh, that's how many calories I burn. And it's like, not really, because you didn't enter in your weight and your age and your gender. Yeah. And those are going to be some of the biggest things that help you in approximating that stuff. So this stuff doesn't, I don't think, I don't know if it factors it in because I think it'll still tell you how many calories you burn, even if you don't enter any of that stuff in. So that's my big problem with that. But it, it's it's okay because even if like I said, as long as it's precise, then you you know you burn more calories in this workout than in the last. You one. know, there's people like looking at that. They're being like, I just burned a thousand calories. Let's go eat some fat Wendy's. Yeah, if you're trying to track your calories that way, it's a little tricky. I think the best way to probably do it, and we'll talk about this more on the calories episode, is just measure your weight and then use your weight and. See, like, if I eat this much food, does my weight go up and down? And you're controlling for, you know, your water, water intake and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's the fat burning myth. The fat burning zone. I think I have a little bit of beef with. I don't. I really, got beef with it now too. I don't have beef so much with the calorie stuff, but gosh, there's actually a lot more things than I even thought about that um, I might have beef with in these things. But I think that for the most part, uh, the, the end takeaway message is that they're still useful. It's just you have to know the the why it's useful and the, yeah. not just take everything at face value and then like you said just using it for nefarious purposes like yeah. l- keeping your intensity really low on the treadmill and figuring the fat burning zone and eating eating the whole large pizza because it says you're burning a thousand calories and you're not even reading it right so mm-hmm. because you burn a certain amount of calories at rest and I, we'll talk about that in another episode we'll talk about energy we'll talk about the laws of thermodynamics in relation to how many calories you burn and you know your basal metabolic rate versus like the extra amount of calories you burn when you're exercising and stuff like that so okay so that's uh i think that's going to do it for this episode we actually are keeping it under an hour Ooh. so i think i think we covered everything we were going to talk a little bit about the future of where these wearable tech things are going are you saying that like people yeah. are going to eat some robots and the robots are going to tell <laughs> oh, you everything you need to know yeah you wouldn't have to wear it it would be like in you yeah you know like the nanobots oh yeah i think in the future for sure there's going to be things that just measure everything for you and they're going to say oh and you're a little bit you're you have 53 percent calcium intake that you you know let's up that a little bit right it's going to actually measure everything for you, which will be great until the healthcare uh, providers get that information. But, you know, that's a whole nother can of worms. But right. hey, we'll get we'll cross that road when we get there. So, yeah, for now, it's like, well, I think I'll probably do a future episode on, you know, exciting new uh, wearable tech and where I want to see it go. And maybe we could do some stuff for Scott Cast too. 
you know, on your on your show. Like <laughs> the, said, the weird ways we can use wearable tech. Yeah, the weird the weird wearables. We have a product that we discussed <laughs> that in you private. Can't, you can't discuss there. <laughs> we, we're not going to discuss it here. It's very private. But we might get rich. The private monitoring, yes. We'll open a, and we'll keep it privatized as well. Mm-hmm. We won't go public with that company. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a proprietary formula for yeah. how we measure the things we're about to measure. But yeah, for another day. For another day. But for today, I think that we've learned a lot. I think we've covered a lot of content in a short period of time. What did we learn today? Oh, never mind. That's your show. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Scott always says, what did we learn today? So um, I don't know if we're going to do that segment at the end. But I think, okay. yeah, I think I think we're just going to let it because I, I really we're getting tight. We got three minutes to wrap it up. Is there anything else you want to yeah, say? Yeah, if we did the where did we learn today, you just it'll yeah. just be a two hour podcast. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I would recap everything we just said again. So, yeah. um, is there anything else you want to say about uh, wearable tech here before we wrap? I gotta up? say, I've never been one to exercise a lot or to be excited about exercising, but learning about these heart rate zones and kind of having something like just telling me in concrete terms, really, that okay, mm. you're you're at that effort level game changer it's like that's good good way to describe it because it's like a game almost where it's Mm -hmm. like if you could just if you could have this uploaded to like a a, an app where it's like a video game and you get experience points and stuff like that i mean oh yeah i mean people like seeing that there's a reason why that stuff works it's like a reward system it gives you points and tells you good job and it's like no, there's nobody else who's going to do that for you. They do have the competition features too. Yeah, with the Fitbit. for people who are competitive, Fitbits are in in not just Fitbits, but any smart watches or anything like that. It's, it's very good because, uh, but you have to find people who are on a similar level to you, and that's the biggest problem. Well, I can it, can it like be like I compete with you, like based on intensity? Yeah, that would probably be. They don't have those metrics though. They just say calories and steps. I wish what they would do is come up with some proprietary thing that factors in uh, your your fitness level. So they don't, I don't think they have that. And if, if, if you guys know, if anybody listening to this does know any watches that do feature that, I'd be very interested to see because I feel like those metrics, you can't just, you can't compare yourself to someone who's in really good shape because then it'd be demotivating. And mm-hmm. it'd just be like, it, it, it kind of works. Like you can share with your friends and stuff, but they're like, oh, they're in really good shape. I'm never going to catch them. And it's not motivating again. So I think always you should try to compare to yourself. Be like, I need to be better, not than not than David, but better than the Scott of yesterday. I like that. Be better than the Scott of yesterday. Everyone. Be Everyone. better than me yesterday. I yeah, was terrible Scott yesterday. Was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be extra terrible for you. <laughs> so before, yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. Okay, so I think that's a good wholesome message that we can wrap this up on. So um, I guess I should probably say if you're listening to this on on, on iTunes and you enjoyed it, give me a good review. That basically is a massive way of making sure any podcast is incredibly successful. Yeah, five stars and leave a message. If you leave six stars, that'd be great. Yeah, if you could just, yeah, somehow if I could integrate it with the, the, the watches so that it would just, you know, give me good reviews on iTunes. I got, I got to, I got to, I'll figure it out. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's all we got today from the One Life to Lift podcast. Um, remember, you guys only got one life to lift. Don't waste it. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Make sure you guys stay tuned. See you later. One Life to Lifters. There you go. We just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're good. I'm good with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs>